All right. Well, I think we might have some other news in another state. Uh, it's now official. Fox News is calling the Virginia governor's race for Republican Glenn Youngkin. Let's bring in Martha and Brett. Uh, it has been a hard fought, long battle here. It is, there's been a lot of polling. Our polling last week finally showed us that it looked like uh, likely voters were going to surge for Youngkin. Looks like he closed strong. Uh, Brett and Martha, what do you think finally got him over the top? It is official. The Fox News decision desk is now calling uh, this race for Glenn Youngkin. He will now be the governor-elect of Virginia, Shannon. And what is amazing is that, it, you know, it looked like this was going to tip earlier in the night. Uh, we had to wait until some of those big places, as Bill described them, uh, came in with all their final votes. But if you look at where Youngkin went uh, from the beginning, uh, and he was not counted in in this race at all, dealing with a former governor who had a Democratic machine in a state that Joe Biden won by 10 points. He was not well known. He was way back in the pack. In fact, he had to work hard to win a primary and then managed to figure out a way to campaign on the issues that people in Virginia cared about. And that is what won uh, Glenn Young in this race. Martha, he turned this tide really in the past few weeks, I would say within a month, uh, that this really turned for Glenn Youngkin, who is now the governor-elect of Virginia, and he is going to bring with him a lot of Republicans that will change the way the Commonwealth operates. Yeah, the side of Glenn Youngkin's campaign bus says a new kind of leader. And I think that the definition of Glenn Youngkin and how he pulled off this very um, upset win in Virginia and how he turned it just over the last several weeks by by really understanding where the people of Virginia were on this issue of education. And also, you know, this is really a testament to the fact that candidates matter. The, the person matters. He had almost no surrogates. He had a team uh, of people that was sort of cobbled together over the course of this while he started to get some more momentum. Uh, the team came together. But this was always all about Glenn Youngkin. Uh, he's a former Rice University basketball player. He worked for the Carlisle Group, Harvard Business School graduate. But he's a, he's a son of Virginia, grew up in Virginia Beach uh, for the most part, and talked about his really positive message. He, he kept saying, Brett, you know, America's the greatest country in the world. You weren't hearing that from the other side. But Glenn Youngkin said it every time he went out there. And I think he gave people a reason to feel good. And they wanted to support him, whether they were independents or Democrats in some cases. And Shannon, as a businessman, he had the opportunity to play it like Mitt Romney did, was mm -hmm. focus on his business career at Carlisle. He didn't really do that. He focused really on issues. And education became an issue that lifted up this campaign. Also, he had going for him a president, a Democratic president, who was falling mm -hmm. in the polls and a number of key misses by the Biden administration. And I think that this race in particular is going to send a message here in Washington, D.C. And I think we don't know where this is going to go as far as how it affects moderates up on Capitol Hill, mm -hmm. how it affects these pieces of legislation that are still stalled because President Obi uh, Biden can't get it across the finish line. I think we have yet to see that, and we have yet to see where this New Jersey race ends mm -hmm. up. No matter what happens in New Jersey, the message has been sent. Virginia is a Republican state now, and it was 10 points to Joe Biden's favor just that long a ago. year and a half ago. And, and I just want to point out this guy. Uh, we've heard uh, Young can say this quite a bit on the campaign trail, but just a reminder of the sot that he has. A lot of times he says, 10 months ago, our first internal poll, I had a 2% name ID with a 3% margin of error. He says we've been focusing on the issues that are most important to Virginia, Virginians in these kitchen table issues. And he really has, listen, this is a very successful guy, but he kind of became known for wearing this fleece vest and walking around and talking to parents and talking about kids. Um, and really trying to connect with people. Um, but, you know, you guys, to hear him say that he was um, polling, basically, it could have been at negative 1% based on the first internal polls. And, and he's not a politician. We didn't know who he was. Um, so he has some commonalities with President Trump and that he was a successful businessman, wasn't a political guy, um, but very different in their demeanor and their execution of their campaigns. Brett Martha. Style, message. Absolutely. Demeanor. Absolutely. He, he's going to be a, a candidate, as I said, who is a model for Republicans 
plans for the future. But he's a he's a very strong individual with a very he's got a lot of energy. He's like six four. He's a big guy. Um, so when he <laughs> walks into the room, he gets a lot of attention. But the way that he navigated the issue of the former president Donald Trump, I think, is something that you're going to hear a lot of discussion about because he he embraced. The, the president's policies. Um, I thought it was very interesting the other night when some when they were pushing this whole the teleconference and was he going to be part of it or wasn't he? He said, uh, you know, I'm going to be somewhere else that night. But you know, our our folks are talking. Yeah. So and he was always threading that needle in a way. And President Trump was one of the first to come out before we called the race uh, and and said, you know, congratulations to him and. But he uh, also supported. said he only won because my base was this motivated. Is exactly <laughs> but right. in reality, Thanks Glenn to the Young had won because out, he, he motivated people in the suburbs. He motivated independents. He motivated some Democrats in Virginia to cross over and vote for him. That is something mm -hmm. today Donald Trump could not do in Virginia, at least as the environment is currently. And uh, so this is a unique candidate that managed to walk between between those uh, minefields of uh, political troubles. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think about President Biden, too, who we've said, you know, is on his way back from Scotland and he's going to land and sort of see a new landscape. And you think about Bill Clinton um, back in 1994, sort of shifting towards, you know, work to welfare programs and going towards the middle. That was after the midterms uh, when Republicans under Newt Gingrich had an enormous sweep. But you wonder if the Biden administration sort of tries to recalibrate before that potentially happens to them and takes the message that we're seeing tonight in Virginia and in New Jersey as well. I think even regardless of what the final outcome is in, in New Jersey or whether he stays the court. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.